Last week, we paid a visit to Nature's Way Cooperative to learn about their export service facility and get a behind the scenes look at their services. If you missed the episode, here's a recap. We uh, run the, uh, the HTFA chambers, so the uh, high temperature forced air chambers here in uh, Nandi. Just, um, so we're basically located next to the airport. So our primary ro uh, role as, um, as a cooperative is to assist our farmers and exporters with the exporting of the, uh, the four main commodities, which is uh, papaya, mango, breadfruit, and eggplant. So if you're sitting in Auckland and you're enjoying uh, a Fiji red papaya, it would have come through nature's way. So as I was saying, our primary role is to operate the HTFA chambers and um, what the, the, the purpose of the chamber is to, um, is to kill uh, fruit fly. So we are a fruit fly um, a facility as well, in the sense of you bring your, your produce here, we'll treat it, we'll pack it, and then we'll, we'll send it off to your agents to be exported. Now you can't um, uh, export papaya, breadfruit, mango, or bangan from Fiji without it first coming through nature's way. You can catch up with all our previous episodes on our YouTube channel. Be sure to hit that sub, like and bell button so you don't miss any of our uploads. Today we're focusing on NWC's research and extension division and how it helps develop the best produce for our farmers and exporters. We are quite unique in the sense of uh, we run our own in-house uh, research and extension arm. Um, what that means is that we will support our farmers and exporters in uh, any issues they may have on farm, if there's uh, any outbreaks of, let's say, uh, um, an eggplant disorder, our officers will go out, will inspect the farm, we'll liaise with biosecurity and the Ministry of Agriculture, the research division, and we'll try and uh, find a way of, of addressing the issue. We meet Kaitu, one of NWC's extension officers, Solo, one of the farmers they are working with, and Ramesh, a tractor operator who ties in with a very important role. That's all coming up, stay tuned. time to harvest, you will notice that out of that 500 trees, 50% will be uh, female, mm. meaning the round fruit. These are all local fruit. So you only have 50% left for the hemophrodite or the export uh, fruit. But again, that 50% of uh, hemophrodite fruit, only 20%, 20 will be deformed fruit, small size fruit, fruit that's unwanted, rejects. So you only have 30% of fruit available that you can, you can use it for, for export. Kaitu Erosito is a research and farm development specialist at Nature's Way Cooperative. Referred to as the breadfruit doctor around town, Kaitu is also quite the papaya expert. So our extension officer Kaitu is, uh, is very knowledgeable in the field of bagging and tagging. He's been with the cooperative for uh, coming on a decade now. So he's very knowledgeable. He's probably uh, one of the most experienced in Fiji when it comes to the Fiji red papaya. And uh, he is known locally as our breadfruit doctor. So Kaitu is very knowledgeable in, in breadfruit. Uh, he's done a lot of work in the field of breadfruit. So we're quite fortunate to have a member of staff who is not only knowledgeable in breadfruit, but also papaya. I represent the uh, research and uh, extension department. Uh, so uh, weekly, every week, we, me and the team, we go out and uh, visit our members. Uh, only the members, uh, the members are all uh, uh, located at uh, Simatoka Bill, uh, normally growing papaya, eggplant, uh, breadfruit, and uh, mango. Uh, like I said, these are all the big uh, produce that are coming in. Normally for uh, bagging, uh, bagging and uh, tagging of uh, fruit, uh, which is one of the uh, most important uh, role for Nature's Way, uh, which is the seed block, uh, seed block fruit. Eh? Uh, right now we we don't have any papaya seeds. 
Uh, there's only two places that uh, the farmer or the nursery man uh, purchase uh, their papaya seeds from, and that is the Ministry of Agriculture, and the second one is Nature's Way Cooperative. So we uh, supply uh, certified uh, uh, papaya seeds to the nursery men and also to interested uh, farmers. And um, one of the main problems now we are facing is there's no seeds. That's the reality. After the uh, cyclone, cyclone uh, herald and now the COVID-19, we could see there's a lot of damage in, um, especially on the Bila level. That's where all these uh, uh, produce are coming in, bulk of it, eh? uh, compared to the rest of the uh, places. Uh, we are all focusing on the uh, Singatoka area. After the cyclone, uh, we could see that uh, it was all affected. Even our seed block fruit, when we went to the uh, site, there was none left. All the fruit was damaged, all the trees was uh, falling down, and uh, we have to rebuild. Uh, rebuild means going to other new uh, farmers, and selecting the uh, papaya farm, selecting the the robust uh, robust uh, trees, trees that are early bearing, trees that uh, have uh, big size flowers. Those are some of the criteria when we go out to the field to go and do our begging and tagging for our, mainly for our seed block. The main reason why I I stress this uh, is because of the purity of the papaya seeds. Uh, we have uh, heard uh, stories that uh, some of the farmers, they are just going out to the field and just collecting all the fruit, peeling out all the seeds and just planting it and then carry on from there. So what will happen, uh, there will be a big problem. The papaya industry is, uh, uh, will struggle, will be in a lot of stress, especially keeping the purity of the, the seeds. So Coming up, Kaito tells us more about the bagging and tagging process, bricks levels, and how these papaya seeds are extracted. Welcome back. Today we're visiting Nature's Way Cooperative, Fiji's only hot air treatment facility for all fruit fly commodities that Fiji exports. We're speaking with Kaitu Erasito, NWC's research and farm expert who's going to tell us how bricks levels are measured. Bricks level is basically the sweetness level of any fruit. For the Fiji red papaya, the sweetness level has to be more than 12%. Anything below this is discarded. So we harvest from the field and then we weigh the fruit. So all the fruit that uh, needs to be passed as a seed block fruit has to be above 300 uh, grams. Yeah, 300 grams. And uh, on the fruit, it has to have the tree number and the row number. This is very important, tree number and the row number. So this is uh, tree number one, row one. So for example, this uh, tree is tree number one, row one. Okay. So whatever happens to the seeds that we are collecting from this fruit, it will go back here in this record. Once, we, when is, once it is uh, over 300, we write down the tree number and the row number, the date of harvest and the date of uh, evaluation, meaning the date of uh, carrying out uh, this uh, seed block uh, seed processing. And then uh, fruit weight, we write the fruit weight, and then we check, we check the bricks. How do we check the bricks? By using a refractometer. This is a refractometer. We just uh, uh, pour a uh, just a drop of uh, papaya uh, flesh or papaya liquid from in, inside the refractometer. And with the help of uh, the a background of sunlight, you will have to look inside and uh, you see the reading. The reading for this, uh, the bricks level of that papaya is uh, 20. And uh, we, we have to check uh, 
the flesh color. This is uh, red, so it has a five point. So from red to yellow. If you notice yellow color, you reject the, the whole seed, the whole fruit, because the yellow color shows, uh, shows the, um, the, there has been a, a fertilization of local variety with, uh, with Hawaiian. So normally the Hawaiian papaya or the Fiji red has a red flesh color. But uh, the local ones, we know our local uh, papaya, it has uh, a yellow or a light uh, yellow. So once you see that, you disregard that fruit. But uh, if, he has, if the fruit has a, a red, five, and then the number goes down. If uh, it all passes, no uh, rot, no disease, then you uh, remove the seeds. How do we remove the seeds? Just by using a simple spoon. Yeah. And uh, once you remove it, uh, you have to uh, take note of the, the, the pulp that comes along with, uh, uh, with the seeds. After the seeds are removed, they are put in a bucket of water to soak overnight. So the ones that are floating on, the, on, on top of the water, these are all empty seeds. These are unwanted seeds. So you bring in the, the sieve. Bring in the sieve just to remove the, the ones that are floating on top. So after the removal of pulp from the papaya seeds, uh, we take it for drying. And this is the end result of uh, the dried uh, papaya seeds. Uh, it takes uh, 14 days to fully dry the seeds. It's very important at this stage. Uh, sometimes uh, you pack the seeds and it's still uh, in um, uh, still uh, wet, and uh, it can also cause a problem with the packaging, especially uh, rot and uh, fungus. Uh, once it uh, is this dried properly, you pack it. This is the package that we are using on each way. Uh, one. Uh, one uh, packet should uh, have uh, 25 uh, grams. Once the seeds are packed to 25 grams, the NWC red papaya label is applied with all the packaging information including the farmer or batch number and the date of packaging. The packets contain approximately 1,000 to 1,200 seeds. And, uh, from there I take it to the nursery, plant it, grows it in the nest, nursery and uh, interested farmer comes in again buy the seedlings from him at uh, 50, I don't know, now it's 60 cents uh, per PB3 quarter then goes back to, the, to his farm, plants it and then nature's way extends and goes back to that farmer again, do the whole process again bagging, tagging and bringing the seeds again until we process it and then it just goes on uh, on that same uh, cycle Kaito and I then made our way outdoors for some afternoon papaya and learn about how they work with their farmers like Solo. Tell me about the, um, the farmer that we're going to meet today, uh, Solo. Yeah. I believe you mentioned Solo, yes. Uh, yeah. uh, how, what is he doing to um, help you with this? Uh, he's, he's also an active uh, farmer. His uh, location, uh, water source is uh, close by. Okay. So he just uh, tick all the box, uh, not only him, the rest of the 10 farmers that we are selecting, right. this is like the team, uh, the best team yeah. to uh, not only just plant, but uh, we'll follow up. So uh, we will have a continuous meeting with uh, all the 10 farmers. Yeah. Uh, they'll bring in their ideas, new innovation, uh, how to uh, weed control, how to uh, apply fertilizer or any problems they are facing. We are here. Ex uh, extension and research officer yeah. to help them out. Right. So if we plant uh, uh, now, uh, July, uh, maybe next year, uh, April or May, June. Hey. You said it was nine months, right? Nine months. Nine months, nine months harvest, yeah. until harvest. Yeah. So there's a reason why too we selected this month to, to plant. Yeah. 
Uh, mainly because, see, uh, we just had a cyclone. Cyclone now and flood are the two main uh, causes of uh, papaya industry to fall down. Yeah. So the reason why we choose this, uh, air, uh, this month is uh, when we plant now, we are going straight to the uh, cyclone season, which is uh, going to be uh, end of the year until uh, July uh, next year. Yeah. So let's say if a hurricane comes during this time, our papaya tree will still be short. Right. Yeah. Okay. Compared to the long ones, yeah. Yeah, when it's a long one like the ones in uh, Singapore Valley, yeah. that's it. Uh, you, you can have all your trees it's gone, gonna... yeah, all gone. Yeah. But uh, once it is still uh, short, you can still manage. You can put it up with a pack and then carry on from there. Right. So that's uh, one of the reasons why we chose uh, to plant during this time. Even though it's dry, but uh, to the farmers, irrigation is the key. Yeah. If you can just irrigate, ir irrigate these um, trees until uh, September, we'll have the rain coming there. But we don't know if the rain is only going to come or the rain and the wind going to come. Oh. Uh, so uh, okay. it's a bit of gamble, but uh, hopefully if there's no hurricane, no flood, no cyclone, we'll, uh, they're, they're going to be a good harvest in next yeah. year. Right, well, thank you so much, Kaitu. And um, we're going to go meet now with the one farmer that you're working with, uh, Solo, and uh, just see how things are going for them. But that's after we finish our Fiji rent. <laughs> <laughs> Up next, it's time to meet Farmer Solo. Let's find out what being an NWC member entails. is the most helpful, most useful, and most noble employment of man. Let's head over to Solo's 16-acre farm out in Votuwal Evunandi. Solo is one of the farmers Nature's Way is working with to develop the best Fiji red papayas. Ramesh Prasad, a tractor operator but a non-member of NWC, also ties in with this farmer's story with his own tractor business. But for now, join Solo and I under the molly tree for a little chat. Thank you, Shani Mbula. Uh, thank you for coming. It's nice to have you here with us also. And I'd like to say Mbula to all the, those that are listening and tuning into our program. Um, uh, my name is Solo Komitotoya. I'm, I'm uh, re recently just been uh, with... Uh, uh, terminated by Fiji Airways, so uh, uh, this is what I do now. Uh, I'm, my farm is located here in Votolevu, Rice Mill Road. Uh, been here for the last uh, four or five years since we purchased this farm, and we've been developing it along the, this years uh, for, uh, for the last uh, four to five years. Uh, we have uh, been planting, but we were not too much focused on the planting. We were, because of the work that we did, uh, I was flying half the time, we were flying the other half, coming back home and, and then continue where I left off. And depending on others to come and help us in the farm. And, uh, but it's nothing uh, different. Uh, what has changed here is that uh, since uh, you know, you've uh, been terminated from the it's now have brought me to be on a full time. So I now live on the farm here in uh, Wutolewu and have been engaged in it fully now uh, uh, in farming. So it's a blessing that, uh, that you are able to have something to do uh, after life after flying. I really, I mean, it's been great flying, but uh, farming is something that has taken me to another level to know and to learn and to, to experience. Um, uh, so this is a good opportunity for me to be uh, to do a full-time work, which is now farming. Yeah. Um, been farming for uh, not at the at the commercial level. I think I've done this for slowly building up from the last four to five years. Uh, but growing up in a home, a household, uh, farming has always been part of your life. Uh, as we grow up in, and being young kids, you know, you got your grandparents, you got your parents there doing some backyard farming, maybe a little Darlo Petsy or a little Tavioka. And then villages that you go to, and my, where my maternal links, I 
travel. So you've been growing up as part of family. We decided as my wife and I to, to purchase something bigger, prepare ourselves for retirement, yeah. and probably start working on it slowly. And that's what we've been doing for the last years as we are getting, uh, when, since we purchased the farm. So it's been good. Uh, but now I, I'm, I'm uh, looking at life now as a full-time farmer, and this is even best because you're, you're working uh, at your own pace, you're working with others that uh, you can find to, to share knowledge with. Uh, most of all, uh, today has been really like uh, uh, when I, we bought the land, I joined with the Nature's Way. Yeah. And uh, so ever since then, I've been uh, you know, reading, I've read up on Nature's Way now and again, but when we bought the farm, because Fiji Airways was close by, that time was supposed to close by Nature's Way. Yeah. And I was wondering what Nature's Way was all about. And not until I walked in and decided to have a look. And uh, I thought uh, probably I just have to go in and ask if I could join. So uh, filled in the process, paid in the required fees, and, and then became a member ever since. Um, but today is uh, really uh, is part of the beneficiary that Nature Way has offered uh, to do the papaya planting funded by. Uh, EU to do to assist farmers and this is one of the projects that I'm really excited about. Uh, one, the, the t it's been timely because like I said, eh, we can terminate it. Now you get into this project, you are now seriously, there's a continuity of your life. Uh, you've closed one chapter of life and you open another chapter of farming. Yeah. And, and now it's uh, something that you, you, you look into and taking upon this challenge. And the timing that Nature's Way came in and this funding provided, it's been a great blessing and opportunity. With Nature's Way, uh, the, they provide the technical skills, the services, they've got extension offices, you've got uh, Kaitu that's, you know, as an extension officer with Nature's Way, that's really going to support us. So uh, you're not alone doing it with a guest line work and trying to handpick information, but everything's been provided for. So it's really basically, it's a learning ground for you and, and, and really working with Nature's Way allows you to farm at the level of, um, to their standard. And you know Nature's Way is more where all the exports uh, um, uh, take place. You know, that they've got the high uh, temperature for, for their facilities yeah. available in Nasoso. So there's an international standard there. So your farm has to be to that level too. So you know you take on that challenge and uh, see how it pans out for us. Um, I'm grateful for their funding. Um, now they've done the land prep. We're going to get the seedlings they'll provide. Okay. And then they have uh, the expertise and the skills to provide. Now it'll be up to me how to handle it. So really, I, I, I'm liking the challenge because now you, you're worth to be, you have to prove your worth of being selected. So that's the good part about it because you're learning something as you go along and as you're working together with them, they'll be holding your hand. So that is good for me. And how does a tractor operator like Ramesh tie in with this initiative? Well, we caught up with him after he finished off with Solo's land prep to understand his line of work better and get some advice from his 40 plus years of experience in the field. Hmm. Hmm. मंगता है कि पपीता वाला खेत में पपीता जो प्रोग्राम वो जो निकला है प्रोजेक्ट उसमें वहां टिकटक मंगता लो लेके इसमें सब फामा लोग के जगह-जगह सब खेत बनावे तो मतलब अच्छा ठीक कर देगा जैसे कोई कोई फामा सब फामा लोग फार्मिंग के बारे में सब अच्छा से जाने नहीं है ना कि कब खेत को जोता जाए कब कौन सी करा जाए कैसे कब बोआ जाए ना तो हम है जब कभी-कभी पानी बरस जाए आदमी घोरा दे हमें कि आओ हमारे खेत जोत देना तो हम ही नहीं कि खाली बस पैसे पीछे दौड़ता कि खाली हम जाइए उसके बता दीजिए इसका जाए खेत जोत दी उसके भी वो पैसा देवे ना हमारे काम है कि उसकी खेत बना के दो काहे कि हम जनता है कि खेत कौन टाइम पे बनी कि वो खेत हम जोतेगा और गिल्ला होई तो फिर उस पे टिकटा हाले है तो मट्टी दबते रही ना हाँ टिकटा बहुत गड़ू चीज़ है तो उसके टाइम पे जोतो जैसे फरफर हो जाए 
तब जाके जुटता है भले फामा हमें बुलाते रहे कि जाओ यार जो दो जो दो ना बट हम उसके अच्छा समझाता फिर कि नहीं ऐसे काम नहीं करो अभी जोत देगा टिक टहला देगा पानी बरसा है तो खेत से गिल्ला हो जाए और कड़ा भी हो जाए मट्टी बैठ जाए तुम फरफर नहीं रही तुम बोई नहीं पाएगा कोई चीज़ ना उसे कोई भी चीज़ हो तो उसके फिर जोत के फिर देखो अगर मौसम ज़्यादा झूरक समय है टाइम है तो मौसम के भी तरफ देखे पड़े है कि अगर वो ज़्यादा झूरा रही तो ढेर रोज तक अगर उसे ही छोड़ देगा और कभी कभी कोई कोई फार्मा लोग जल्दी एकदम ताव चढ़ा रहे कि मांगे एक आध दुई हफ्ता में बोए दे कुछ ना कुछ ना तो जो दिया है तो अगर जल्दी से जल्दी मांगे हैं कि नरम खेत उसमें कुछ वो दी रहे बोए के तो उसके मांगो एक से दो रोज में मांगो हेंगा मार दो हेंगा मारेगा तो थोड़ा जो मट्टी ओदी स्टाइल है तो हेंगा लगे से वो मट्टी जाए फूट महीन हो जाए महीन हो जाए तब उसके तुम फिर से जोतेगा या फिर हेंगा मारेगा जिन कुछ तब उसमें ओदी रुक जावे तब वो टाइम पे अपन बोल दी और कोई कोई है जिसे मांगे कि जोत के छोड़ दो ग्रास वरास झुराया जाए ना मट्टी जर जाए पानी बरसे बट पानी पता नहीं कब बरसे हम लोग के वेस्टर्न साइड बहुत ड्राई टाइम रहे अभी ड्राई टाइम तो अभी बहुत मुश्किल से अभी एक बीच में तो पानी मिल गया रहा पता नहीं कैसे हाँ नहीं तो यहाँ बहुत झूरा पड़ जाए हाँ Well, that's all we have time for. Join us next week as we continue on with Solo's new journey and do a one-month follow-up on his farm. Yes, the papayas are starting to grow, and we'll be taking a break from our Wild Wild West series and give you a sneak peek of our upcoming Garden Island series. We'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>